Welcome again, and this particular video is going to focus on how to do screen sharing using the Microsoft Teams via the web browser. As you can see on my screen, I've got multiple tabs that are open, and I am on a call with a student that has so graciously offered me to be able to um, use her as my test subject so that I can share and I, I can share my screen with her and then I can show you my dear teachers on how to share your screens if you're using the web browser version of Microsoft Teams. So the first thing that you're going to note when you um, scroll your mouse over the screen is that you're going to see that you've got your little camera, you can turn it on or off your microphone, and then that middle button is the share button. If you select the share button, you will see that you've got screen share or you can share a particular application like PowerPoint, whiteboard, or a couple of other ones, or you can even browse other ones. So what we're going to look at is screen sharing first. So if you click on desktop window, you actually get a pop up here. This is different from if you were using the Microsoft Teams application for a PC. So be careful about how you share your screen. So you can share your entire screen so that no matter what applications you are looking at, um, your students will be able to see. If you select application window, then you can say, okay, well, I only want them to focus on this particular screen where I'm on that I've got my 10 different little tabs and I've got my Microsoft Teams open, I've got my YouTube for a class video. And then I also have a document for the class to go, that goes along with that video. So I really only want to focus on that one. And so then I would select this one. Or if I want to be able to use something that's a little bit more interactive, then I can use a different window. I can use Paint. I can use Word. So whatever window I want. Or if you just want to focus on a particular tab. So for example, I've got my mail, I've got a video for my students, I have documents that I've got open, and I only want my students to be able to see a particular tab, then now I can see what tabs I have open, and then I can select a particular tab. So let's say I just want my students to be able to view that YouTube video. I can select that and I can click share and that's all that they will be able to see. So for right now, let's look at sharing our entire screen. So if I click on my actual screen, then I can click on share. <coughs> and now my student will see everything that you see that's on my screen right now. And so if I go to this video, she can see this, she can see this tab. I can open my email. I could open a form. So I, like, I could be looking over here. I could be here. I could be over here. I could be switching between windows. I could be looking at this and this is on her screen as well. So now if I don't really want to look at that, I can actually from right here, click on where it says stop sharing. And it's letting me know that uh, Teams is actually sharing my entire screen. So I can go ahead and I can click stop sharing. I can go back to my little meeting with my student and I can say, okay, I really only want you to be focused on this particular video or this particular window. So now I can be here and I can say, okay, I want this particular window. And so all she can see is what you see currently on my screen. But now I'm I want to work on something else. I want to look at this other journal that I was working on and so I can select that particular journal. She does not see the screen. I can continue working on this little journal that I've got going and I can keep typing away as that video is going in the background and she will not see any of this. She will still only see this particular window that I've got here. So I can I forgot to put the video on. So I could have this video on go going on here and that's all she will see. Whereas if I'm over here, oops, I'm over here, she can't see this. She's only seeing this video. Now, if I stop sharing this as well, I can go ahead and I can click on my little share button. And now I really just want her to focus on the questions that I had for that video. So I'm again going to go to screen share and desktop window. And this time I'm going to select Chrome tab. 
And so I actually wanted to focus on this particular PDF. And so if I click share, this is the only window that she can see. And if you notice on your screen, it actually lets you know this is the tab that Teams is sharing with your students. So I can go back and I can look at this video and it's still telling me which tab it's being shared. If you can see that at the top of my little screen right here, I can go back to my Teams and while I can still see her name over here or her little icon over here, she's still not seeing that. She's still only seeing that particular PDF. And so this really works, especially if you know you have to take attendance and you've already started playing your video. You can go back and you can take your attendance. You can check your email or you could be working on something else that's being productive that, you know, still helps the, your students. And you can be doing all of those things while the student is still over here watching this particular um, or reading this particular set of questions. And so that kind of helps to make everything a little bit easier. It's easier to get to, and you can still see this little tab that lets you know, like, hey, you know, like, don't forget that you're still sharing your screen and it's this particular window. So you, if she's been on the screen for 10 minutes, that's been too long for that set of questions. So then while you're over here, then you can just go ahead and you can click stop. And now she no longer sees that. Now, another thing, another function that is very good to use, especially if you know that you can trust your students and that the functionality that, um, and, and well, really that you can trust your students is Microsoft Whiteboard. So if I click on Microsoft Whiteboard, <coughs> Microsoft Whiteboard is an interactive program. And so I get multiple little options here. I don't necessarily need to get a new app. I just want to continue using it here within Teams. So I'm going to select use whiteboard in Teams instead. And then that way it will just pop open here. And so I've got this little menu here on my on the right hand side of my screen. My student also has this exact same little screen. So if I select a color, I'm going to pick green and I can start working on, let's say, a math problem. And I'm saying I've got three to the third power times five. You need to be very careful when you're using whiteboard with your students because you might have students that don't necessarily feel that what you're putting up here is very important. And they might just start playing around and they might actually grab the eraser like I'm going to ask my student to do here for me. Can you just grab the eraser and you just start erasing some of the stuff that I'm putting on? And then that, that way you can see like this is, while it's a good tool to use because it is interactive and your student would be able to write, I'm asking my student to just go ahead and grab that eraser here at the very bottom of the screen. And she can actually start erasing stuff that I've got on my screen. So while it's a good tool, can can you start erasing something that I've got on the screen for me? Psst. I think she fell asleep. Okay, so, but she could actually, you know, accidentally start erasing stuff that I've got on my screen, or she can just grab a different color and she can start drawing little slashes or putting dots everywhere. And so while it's a good functionality because it is, um, interactive and like your students can actually also do this and it would be disruptive if a student starts doing something like this and actually erasing everything that you've got so a different solution is one okay well i don't want them to keep writing so i can actually click on stop presenting and now that takes out that screen from them they don't no longer have access to that screen and then the next thing I would actually think about doing, and this was actually a suggestion that was made to me by my students, was to click share and then share a window. And then they've actually suggested, and it's a very good suggestion, to just share a paint document. And so if I wanted to do, for example, a math problem, I can just share like this particular paint and I can give them this problem and have absolutely no problem with me writing on here and my students will have access to view the screen. I can write on here, I can 
you know, make little doodles. We're doing a graph and that was some sort of weird function. And here's my X axis. I can make all of this and not have to worry about my students um, erasing something that I have that I want them to be able to see. And so it's just another good functionality that you can use. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. In this particular case, you don't necessarily, when you go to share your screen, you don't have to necessarily worry about the audio as long as you do not have any additional speakers or microphones or such connected to your computer. If you do, you do, if and, and you wanted to play, for example, a video for the class, then you do need to make sure that you are disconnecting any additional speakers, microphones from your computer because the students will not be able to hear it. They will only be able to hear whatever the computer speakers hear. So I hope that this video has been helpful to you and I will be signing off. Thank you so much.